Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20. I'm going to be staying on the Amplified, but I'll be reading the King James Word first. Matthew 20, I'm reading from verse 29 to verse 34. Praise God. 29 to verse 34. This is where Jesus heals two blind men. Praise God. Now look at verse 29. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. 31. And the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. Verse 34 says, So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes opened, received sight, sorry, and they followed him. Father, we want to thank you this morning. Our lives is to follow you only. And even as we delve into your word right now, we ask that you speak through us. And we are all connected with one mind, one spirit, one heart. That at the end of the message, we all receive that word. That will change our tomorrow. We thank you, dear God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you look at verse 32, and I'm going to read it the amplified version. Verse 32 says, Jesus stopped and called them and asked, What do you want me to do for you? And that is the title of our message today. What do you want me to to do for you. Now Jesus is asking. But let's go back to verse 29. Or better still, before verse 29, you know, this is where Jesus now is on his way to Jerusalem for to celebrate the Passover feast with his disciples. Amen. But more importantly, he was actually going to suffer and to die. Now if you look at the same Matthew 20, looking at verse um, 18 and verse 19. I'll just read that to you. Now Jesus is talking to his disciples. He says, listen carefully. We are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and scribes. Praise God. He says the Jewish high court. And they will judicially condemn him and sentence him to death. 19 says, and will hand him over to the Gentiles, the Roman authorities, to be mocked and scourged and crucified, and he will be raised to life on the third day. So his journey to Jerusalem basically was to suffer and to die for you and I. Praise God. But while on his way to Jerusalem, he passed through Jericho. Praise God. Now let's look at it. He passed through Jericho. Amen. Verse 29 says, And they were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed them. I'm reading the Amplified. A large crowd followed them. The King James says, A great multitude followed them. Praise God. Now, these people that followed Jesus, the multitude that followed him, the crowd that followed him, a lot of them wanted to hear from him. They were clamoring just to touch him. Some wanted to take a selfie picture with him. So many things was going on. It's, the Bible says a crowd, a multitude, a lot of people followed him. They wanted to hear him teach as he was going to Jerusalem for the Passover. To become the last lamb to be passed over. Praise God. Amen. That's what they did. The crowd, they were all in a, a festive mood. 
celebrating, excited, shouting, singing, dancing, rejoicing, playing instruments here and there. You know, when you're excited to see someone, praise God. That's how it is. And that's what happened here. And that's why today when you see an important person, maybe a celebrity or a president or someone known, everybody wants to go close to that person. They want to take a picture. They want to, you know, take a selfie so that they'll say, yes, I took a picture with this person and that person. It did not start today. It started while Jesus was there. Amen. And that's to tell you that these things are happening in our life today. It's not new. Praise the Lord. But let's go ahead. Verse 30. Verse 30 says, And two blind men were sitting by the road. And when they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David, Messiah. You know, this scripture, you can actually read it also in the book of Mark chapter 10. And also go to the book of Luke. Now, he says, and two blind men. If you read the book of Mark, it tells us who one of these blind men was. And that was blind Bartimaeus. Amen. Amen. Blind Bartimaeus. So, he says, two blind men were sitting by the road. Praise God. And something happened. He says, and when they heard that Jesus was passing by. Praise God. Now, these men have never met Jesus before. Praise God. They only heard. They've heard of his miracles. They heard of the healings. They heard of all he has done through the prophets. And because of what they've heard, they believed. Praise God. And then the Bible says, when they heard. See, it's very important to always take in the right information. Because you see, too many negative information is running wild in our world today. Too many negative information. And that's why I want to encourage you, know what you allow inside of you. Know the kind of information that gets inside of you. Now, these blind men, they heard. They took in the right information. They followed everything that was said. They heard that Jesus healed the blind. They heard that Jesus healed the lame. They heard that Jesus raised the dead. They were hearing things that he even taught in the synagogue. In the synagogue. He even taught the scribes. He taught the leaders. He went up in the mountain. He prayed. So many things. He was baptized. They heard so many things about Jesus. And they held on to that belief. Amen. They held on to that belief. Now see what it said. It says verse 20, 30. And two men, blind men, were sitting by the road. And when they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, Lord, have mercy on, upon us, on us, son of David, Messiah. The Bible says they cried out. The Greek word for cry is krazo. K-R-A-Z-O. And it literally means to cry out in anguish. It also means, you know, when a woman is giving birth. That cry of a, of a, of a woman in childbirth. That is the kind of cry. This is a cry that nothing can stop you. Praise God. Nothing, no one can stop you from whatever it is. You're crying from deep within. Nothing could stop them. Praise God. Nothing could stop them. They did not just raise their voices, but they were screaming aloud. They were shouting. They were crying. This is the same shout that they shouted when the walls of Jericho fell down. Praise God. They were shouting and screaming. Screaming on everything. On all of their voices. Amen. And while they were screaming, the Bible says, they screamed, Lord, have mercy upon us, O son of David. Praise the Lord, O son of David. And that's why, you see, it's always good to use what you have to get God's attention. This man, all they had was their voice. They never met him. All they had was their voice. And this man, they screamed, screamed, and screamed. And that's why the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6, it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Praise God. Seek the Lord while he may be found. This man, they heard that Jesus was on his way, you know, to Jericho, to, from Jericho to Jerusalem. 
So when they heard he was coming, they were screaming. Now mark my word, there were people already shouting. There were people already dancing, screaming, making noise, rejoicing. Because Jesus is passing by. They were glad. But this man did not respond to what they were shouting. Rather, they shouted above them so that they can receive from Jesus. And that's why it's always expedient that you use whatever it is you have. The last thing you have that you can give for the gospel. Use it to get Jesus' attention. Use it to get his, his um, attention. Because the funny thing is he might not pass by again. And that's why you have to. Praise God. Now let's go ahead. Verse 31. 31 says, The crowd sternly told them to be quiet. Praise God. It says the crowd sternly told them to be quiet. The King James says the crowd rebuked them to be quiet, to be at peace. Amen. I want you to understand this. When you give your total attention to God, there will be distractions. There will be obstacles. There will be barriers. Praise God. There will be people that would want to destroy your vision. Vision killers. You're saying you want to go into this thing. Someone tells you, why should you? They tell you, you say you won't do this. Someone say you don't have to. You don't have the strength for it. Obstacles will come your way. You are into something and there are barriers, there are obstacles holding you. Praise God. But it's something you have to understand. He says here in verse 31, he says, The crowd sternly told them to be quiet. Praise God. But they cried out all the more. Lord, son of David, Messiah, have mercy upon us. The crowd tried to rebuke them. The barriers, the mountains, they were there. But these men, they refused. Rather, they refused to listen. They refused to listen to what they were saying. My brothers and my sisters, things are going to be said about you. People are going to do things against you. But don't pay attention to it. Don't pay attention to those obstacles. Don't pay attention to the challenges. Don't pay attention to the circumstances. Amen. Stay focused on the prize. The prize is your goal. Stay focused on what God has for you. As a ministry right now, there are several obstacles that we're going through. But those obstacles are bread for us. We are climbing those obstacles every day and moving up higher and higher every day. The same thing for you in your job, in your business, whatever it is. Promotion is guaranteed. You have to stay strong. You have to stay focused. Refuse to listen to what they say. Pay attention to what the word of God says. Praise God. Refuse to observe the obstacles. Because they are only barriers that will hold themselves down and not you down. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. He says that the Bible says the crowd, they try to put them off. They try to, you know, stop them. But these men refused to be discouraged. They were helpless. Praise God. They were helpless. But they were not hopeless. They were miserable. But they were not discouraged. Refused to be discouraged or dismayed. No matter where it is. Our first lady gave a beautiful testimony of our beloved brother and sister. Praise God. Brother Godwin and Sister Gladys. For eight years they believed God for a child. Listen, it's never too late with God. It definitely will not be on your own timing. It's always on God's timing. Praise God. And that's why it's always good to hold on to God's timing. And you see, too many Christians, they are not holding on to God's timing. Rather, they are timing God, impatiently waiting for a miracle. They are timing God. Don't time God. Because when you time God, you'll be disappointed. But rather, hold on to God's, God's timing. Praise God. They held on to God. And to God be the glory. Today, they have a child, a son, and even another son on the way. Praise God. Now they did not do those um, things, medical stuff they do to get children. They, this was natural birth. That is it. Don't pay attention to the world. I'm sure there are times when they see children crying. They saw their friends and colleagues. They had their children rejoicing, happy. But they go back to their homes and they are crying and they are asking God, God, why me? Why me? 
They are no more asking that question anymore. It's no more why me. Rather, right now is God, thank you. Because it's God. If you hold on to God, you stay focused on the prize, refuse to listen to what people say around you, refuse to observe those obstacles, refuse to observe the challenges, the barriers, any blockade that you might have, even in your job or business or your finances, refuse to look at them. But rather hold on to faith. Because your faith will see you true. And that is what I have observed in this verse 31. He says, the crowd sternly told them to be quiet. Come on, shut up, be quiet. The Bible says, but they cried out the more. They screamed out the more. He says, son of David, have mercy upon us. Messiah, have mercy upon us. They cried out the more. They could not be stopped. Praise God. That is faith. That is what I call faith. And I call that the cry of faith or the faith cry. Listen, when your faith is on the rise, it pleases God. Don't forget Hebrew 11, 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So the only way that they could please God was to use their faith by screaming out, calling out His name. Messiah, Son of David, have mercy upon us. Praise God. Have mercy upon us. It is your faith that pleases God. The cry of faith, not the cry of worry, not the cry of begging, but the cry of faith. Your cry of faith will bring forth your miracles closer than you expected in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. This cry of faith, they were persistent in it. Now don't forget there were people screaming, shouting everywhere, rejoicing. But their own voices were above theirs. It was a cry of faith. They cried, Lord, have mercy upon us, thou son of David. And with all the noise everywhere, with all the crimes everywhere, with all the singing, the shouting, what happened in verse 32? The Bible says, Jesus stopped. Jesus stopped and called them. Praise God. Listen, Jesus is at, your, is at your bus stop right now. He has stopped because of you. The Bible says Jesus stopped in the midst of the desperation, in the midst of the noise, in the midst of everything. All Jesus could hear was a cry of faith. Even when he had passed them, the Bible says he stopped and he asked his disciples to go call them. This man had a cry in their heart. Praise God. And the Bible says Jesus stopped with all the screaming, with all the shouting from different people. But Jesus, the Bible says, stopped. And this got his attention. Jesus was still attentive to the cry of faith. He was still attentive to those that were outcast. He was still attentive to those that, you know, responded to faith. And he are attentive to not only those that responded to faith, but those that had a heart cry for the gospel, whose faith were pleasing to him. Praise God. Jesus stopped and called them. And what did he do? Jesus only asked a question. When he called them, they helped pick them up and they took them to Jesus. And only thing Jesus did was ask a question. What do you want me to do for you? My beloved brothers and sisters, Jesus is asking you that question right now. Jesus is asking you that question right now. What do you want me to do for you? Because if he's here today asking you that question, what will be your answer? Praise God. What will be your answer? You see, life circumstances will often, will often determine, you know, what we should ask Jesus for. For these men, they had one thing in their mind because of their circumstances at that moment. Praise God. But if Jesus will come here today and ask you, what do you want me to do for you? And guess what? He is asking you that question right now. When he asked me that question, I gave him my own answer. Praise God. I gave him my own answer. It's a different thing if you are the one asking him for something. But this time around, he is the one asking you. He's asking, what do you want me to do for you? 
is there anything too hard for me? There is nothing too hard for me. Jesus is asking you right now. Open your mouth and begin to tell me what do you want? What do you desire of me? What do you require of me? Now is your miracle. Now is your time. Now is the time to receive. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? That is the question the Lord is asking. And then if you look at verse 31, 33, sorry. Verse 33 says, Then Jesus, they answered him, said, Lord, we want our eyes to be opened. Praise God. We want our eyes to be opened. And something you observe here, your definite response matters. Your definite response matters. This man, they didn't ask, oh, let Jesus give us more money. Jesus, you know, we, they, didn't, they didn't question, they didn't give excuses, they did not complain. They didn't say, oh, Jesus, you know we ought to be healed. You know we are good people. Jesus, you know we gave our income, the ones that we can get to the church. Jesus, you know we give our offering, we give our tithes. Jesus, you know we pray all the time to you. We, you know we, we win souls for you. These men they did not question or they did not complain or they did not give excuses. All they said was, Jesus, all we want is our eyes to be open. You know the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20. It says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. It says, you will say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. He says, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. He says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. These men have the cry of faith in them. And you say to this mountain, to this barrier. To this blockade, to this limit, to anything that causes a boundary to your blessing. He says, if you say to it, remove hence from there, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. And this man had that in their heart. They believed so much, nothing was going to stop them. They wanted their miracle there and then. Amen. They wanted their blessings. Now look at what he said. Then he they answered him, Lord. We want our eyes to be opened. Praise God. These men did not zoom into the problem. They didn't come zoom into the issue. They didn't zoom into the situation. Praise God. This is what I call humility. Where you see the master. And then the master asks you, what do you want me to do? And all they wanted, based on their circumstances, was to see. That is total humility. Praise God. And that's why humility is always essential. Essential in his life. Praise God. They did not zoom into the problem. And that's why when, when, wherever you find yourself, never zoom into the problem. Rather, zoom out into the solution. Because when you look at the solution, the solution will solve the problem. Never dwell in the problem. Never dwell in the issue. But rather let go and let God zoom out into the solution because he is your solution. Praise God. He is your solution. And they answered him and said, Lord, we want our eyes to be opened. That is a cry of faith. That is the faith that pleases God. Hey, Allah, Praise God. Now look at verse 34. Verse 34 says, Moved with compassion. This is Jesus now. Moved with compassion. Jesus touched their eyes. Hallelujah. Listen, your miracle of touch is here. Say, I receive. Say, I receive. Your miracle touch is here. God is about to touch you. Amen. He's about to touch you. He says, move the compassion. Jesus touched their eyes. He says, I mean, immediately they regained their sight. And followed him as his disciples. Lord is saying to someone listening to me right now. He's saying you are about to recover everything the devil has stolen from you. He says that miracle touch is here for you. 
You're about to receive the year the Kankawong has eaten. And God is saying he's blessing you twice as much as you had. In Jesus name. I receive that for myself. I receive in the name of Jesus Christ. The year the, the devil has stolen. God is repaying them twice as much as you had. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says with compassion Jesus touched their eyes. And immediately they regained their sight and followed him. Praise God. They received their sight. My prayer for you is you will not forget what Jesus has done for you. You will not forget what he has done for you. This man when they received their sight, they didn't run into the crowd and rejoicing and shouting and, and dancing. But the Bible says, but they followed him. Again, my prayer for you is that you will not forget what God has done for you. Because in remembrance of your miracles and the testimonies you have, God is about to bless you even more. And that's why he's asking you that question today. What do you want me to do for you? This week as you go, you will go in that blessing. Go with that question and go with that solution. Go with that answer. Go because God is ready to release blessings upon your life. That question you've been asking. That question. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 9, I believe is verse um, 23. It says, if a man come to me and deny himself. He says, and take up my cross and follow me. He says, deny yourself. Take up my cross and follow me. This is what this man they did. They followed him. Praise God. You see, so many people, um, following Christ is very essential. You see, in the Bible, there are so many scriptures that, you know, Jesus made disciples of men and they followed him. He says, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. A lot of us, we have apps on our phones. And these apps, they send out notifications. Praise God. And those notifications, because you follow those apps, they are sending you notifications on a daily basis. For example, probably the news network. They send you notifications of what's happening today, what's happening, what just happened. Praise God. They send different notifications. The Bible app. So many Christians don't even have that app. The, 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 the thing that will help them. Praise God. And this Bible app, they send notifications. If you follow those notifications, notifications whereby every day they send a scripture that you can read. And they send prayers. Praise God. They explain those scriptures. Most of these Bible apps. But even there are some Christians who even have the apps, but they, shut, they, they, they turn off the notifications. We shouldn't be. The question is, who are you following? Who are you following? A lot of us, we follow celebrities. We follow what they, what's happening in their lives. We follow every daily thing. If they use the restroom, yeah, the restroom you know. If they do use the bathroom, you know. You just follow them. If they're using makeup, they tell you the kind of makeup they're using, you know. Everything about them, you know. They're going to their car, you know the car they're driving. You know everything. They're about to swing, you know. But there are so many things in the Bible that which you're supposed to know, you refuse to know. Now you have a Bible app that can send this to you on a daily basis of scriptures, of men of God, of what they are saying, of their heart cry, their heart desires. Scriptures of faith. Scriptures that will help you as a Christian. But you don't follow those notifications. But you follow the things of the world. I encourage you. Who are you following? If Christ is who you are following, do the right thing. Do the right thing. Following the right way. Right now we are in church. Praise God. Some of us are here connected with us. Thank God for you. There are those who are not. What are you following? Who are you following? This service is not for 5 hours or 10 hours. Praise God. Highest, 1 hour, 30 minutes, 2 hours. And that's why we need to follow and stay focused. Because when you stay focused on the things of God, your blessings are easily received. That's the truth. Your blessings are easily received. Mark my word. He is not about to bless you more. He has already blessed you. All you need to do is tap into the blessing. And how do I tap into that blessing? Your faith cry. You're following him. Follow him. 
for the truth. Follow him with all of your heart. Don't use follow him with eye service. Oh, when you see a pastor or you see a brother coming, you start acting as though you're holy and down. No. Be truthful to yourself. Be truthful to yourself. Praise God. Follow him. That's the same thing I'm asking you right now. And Jesus, again, is asking that question. What do you want me to do for you? Listen, the master is ready to do something right now. Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to be blessed? Are you ready to lambano what he has for you? He's asking you a simple question. What do you want me to do? This is your miracle time. This is your miracle touch time. This is the time God is about to showcase that yes, he is your God. Praise God. He's asking that question again. What do you want me to do for you? And I'm asking you right now, what do you want the master to do for you? You know what is in your heart. I don't know what it is, but you know what is there. I'm asking you right now to begin to open your mouth and begin to declare what you want from the master. What do you want? What can you see? Can you see that he's about to bless you? He's asking you for something and that thing is about to be received. Open your mouth and begin to ask. Ask. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. He's telling you to ask what you want. What do you want me to do for you? Now is your time. Now is the time to receive. Oh, Paron the Scopa. What do you want me to do for you? Said the Lord. I have a miracle for you. My angels are on the dance standby. Ready to be dispatched on your behalf. Ready to bring your miracles. Now is your time. Now is your blessings. Now is your miracle. Now is your hour. Your hour of salvation. Your hour of testimony. Your hour to receive. Now is your time. Open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. Marum the schools of Varias the Plakina also pretty. Rako Varian the Sejava. Lord, I ask that you give me that desire of my heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, that job, that business, that promotion you're asking God for. Now is your miracle. Now is your time. In the name of Jesus Christ, Marum the schools of Braska. Talirano also Freddy. Rakabana Shaka. Pray right now. Open your mouth and pray. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. If two shall agree as touching, you are a witness of that blessing right now. God is blessing you right now. Open your mouth and bless his name. Man talk about a catalanoscopy. Rakon the scotia. Malikayana. Likoba Saka. Escuba the daddy. Shep the palasco from Tapia. Rakon the city. Lord, you are blessing us. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want him to do for you? Now is your time. Now is your miracle. Open your mouth and speak. Open your mouth and talk to him. Lack of all this shit. Run the ship. Oh, Jaya. Kira, run the souls go from the palace. We thank you, precious Heavenly Father. We give you praise. Lift up your hands and bless his holy name. Thank him right now. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy. Say it after me. Say my miracle touch is here. Say I receive the touch of miracle. Say I'm recovering everything. Promotion has come now. And all I've asked, I receive. And so shall it be for you in Jesus name. Thank him. Bless his holy name. Angels have been dispatched right now. They are bringing the solution, bringing the testimony, bringing the answers that you require. And now is your hour of miracle. Oh,